a Van Connor Strange vlog here. Well, today I was thinking about talking about Steve Fisk. Now, Steve, you know, you may have heard Steve Fisk helped, you know, get us started. Well, that is true. How that happened? Well, it's a strange story because we had a record store in Ellensburg called Ace Records, run by a guy, Tim Nelson. Tim had really, really cool records, especially for a little town like Ellensburg in Eastern Washington, Central Washington, people call it. I, uh, we used to go there, Lanigan went there, Lee went there, we all went there before we knew each other. And he had all sorts of stuff from England, and punk rock stuff, and weird stuff, and old stuff, and new stuff. All, mostly pretty much used stuff, and cutouts. Kids today don't know, cutouts were promo albums that either were given away as promotional copies, and they had a little cut in the top, or they had a stamp on them. Don't sell this, it's a promotional copy. Well, little record stores would sell these, and that's how they made their money. That's how they stayed afloat. And, uh... <clears throat> We're going to be giving out a few cutouts ourselves, but we're not going to be cutting them. So, Fisk, moved, Fisk put, made this record called Anonymous after he was in Pell-Mell or during Pell-Mell, I'm not sure. And there are some Pell-Mell connections. Actually, now, Strange Earth Records works with one of the members of Pell-Mell, Ray Farrell, at our record label, uh, with our record label, with Fine Tunes. So anyway, Steve, another member of Pell-Mell, he put out a record called Anonymous that somehow made it to Ace Records. We bought it. We loved it. Pickerel hand wrote a letter, because that's how he used to do it, and sent it to Steve. He said, hey, you're great. We live in Ellensburg, da da da. And if I remember right, he might have, he wrote Pickerel back and said, I got a friend in that town named Sam Albright who started a recording studio. What? So Steve ends up moving to Ellensburg to run the recording studio, or to work there. And he comes into my parents' video store. And there's this guy. Of course, we were, like, since kids from Ellensburg were, wow, this guy from Pell Mell and Anonymous is here. You know, we're all excited. He comes in the store. And at the time... Steve, I'm sorry, but I gotta tell the story. You know, you loved my mom. She was a great woman. So, we'll apology first. You come in, and we'd been watching that movie Eraserhead a lot. Well, Steve was dressed in this black trench coat, and his hair at the time was just, you know, like Eraserhead style. So my mom was like, oh, you look like that guy from Eraserhead or whatever, and I think it might have been offensive <laughs> to Steve. <laughs> or something right off the bat. But that's a good way to start when you're in Ellensburg. You, first you gotta, people talk a lot of shit in Ellensburg. People just, you you say bad things about people when you first met, meet them and then you kind of get them through that. It's like an initiation process when you meet somebody from our town. Gotta put them through the ringer a little bit. So anyway. So yeah, so Steve comes in and says, hey, I got this studio I'm working at, you should come down, da da da. And I was of course like, you can't just go record. You can't just go do that. And Lee said, yeah, we can. And Lee had a four track and we he recorded a bunch of songs for us to record and we just went in and did it. And that's one actually, people would ask, younger guys ask me for advice about music. It's, my main advice is, don't say, we can't just da-da-da like I did. Just do what my brother made me do and just go do it. And don't. And then after you record it, put it out. I don't care if you have to put it out yourself. I don't care if you have to get it out there somehow. And nowadays with the internet, you can put it out yourself. Really easy. CD baby, go look it up. So, and you can make your own CDs nowadays. We, well, we, we made our own cassette tapes. And, and we had 
bunch of tape machines strewn together and then we hooked up with Calvin Johnson. He distributed it. He was our first distributor. We took it to record stores. We drove all over the state and we, you know, played shows as much as we could. And some people actually got to hear it and uh, seemed to like it. And the next step was make a whole vinyl record. So this was quite an undertaking. We actually took a year and a half, or almost two years, over time writing down at the video store. And we go down and record with Steve. And Sam was hanging around too. He was helping out. He did some of our sessions. And uh, it was a learning experience. Steve taught me uh, about recording and how to throw a metal reel at somebody's head during a recording session. And duct tape and other things were thrown. So he taught us, I guess Steve gave <laughs> gave us the okay to be a little bit psycho. Um, but hey, that's, that's where the action is, somebody said once. Things are a little bit psycho in the studio and on tour. It's not very fun sometimes, but I guess it's passionate, so. So yeah, so we recorded that record. We went, I remember we went all the way to some place guy named Van in Portland to master the thing. We all drove and uh, yeah and I can't remember if that was the time when Lee piled up in the car at Lanigan and they all drove down to LA to master something. That might have been our next record, I can't remember. Maybe that was that record. It probably was. But my memory fails me. But anyway, that's when we first met Steve Fisk. And he just played on the new Vallis record. And so things go for a full circle. And I hope to have him play on the new Vallis record too, if I can get him. I'll talk to you later. Bye.